good afternoon to everybody uh, and i hope all of you are safe and sound and healthy uh, in these times uh, you know deep tech i've been investing for almost 20 years now in venture and uh, this is my fourth downturn and this is very different uh, and this is very different because it is multi dimensional uh, we've had uh, uh, supply chain issues we have health issues we have had travel issues and we have had financial issues so it's like four dimensions hitting you at one time however one common theme which is emerging out of all uh, the last i would say 8 uh, to 10 weeks is that in all of the portfolio companies which we are invested in which is now about uh, 85 uh, and about 50 60 are live um, they have all increased their technology element into their product and service and this is without exception and that is something which is very important uh, and and they have introduced new products new services new technology models new revenue models uh, in the market space extremely agile and <clears throat> so the, and and this has enabled them to introduce themselves to new geographies <coughs> new customer sets and even going international in fact almost half of the companies we have have a global footprint in about 30 countries and that only technology can do so the so fundamentally as mr tata calls it the smoke and stack industry needs a layer of technology to become absolutely more in, efficient and 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 i i will share with you what at the macro level we have and why is first importance of deep tech to india <clears throat> and then i'll get into what's the real life applications which we are seeing and how india is moving towards even a much more deeper tech i think tech is also seen by the fact that india has attracted something like 10 plus billion dollars even in one company which is digital in nature over the last 8 weeks which is amazing and you know that's obviously uh, something which is very rare in the covid times why is deep tech important let me share with you first it's very important to at a macro level to the gdp and to the market caps If you look at the total market cap of the US and if you look at the top 15 companies of the US in technology who are listed in 2015 they constituted 11.6% of the total market cap and in 2019 they increased to 17.82%. However in India the increase was only from 12.3 to 13.75%. and incidentally the definition of tech in india is software service companies so effectively you know the message which comes to us from here is that the software service companies are considered to be smoke and stack it the top 15 companies you know they are all companies which all of you know are fundamentally product companies so there's a big value to product companies the top 15 market cap in the us as as a Uh, uh grew from 15 as a percentage of gdp grew from 15.9 to 31.3% whereas in india it is not grown at all it is 7.6 to 7.9% and incidentally the overall market cap of gdp to gdp ratio in us has grown from 1.4 to 1.8 whereas in india it has declined from 0.6 to 0.57 so what's the learning and what's the implications of this deep tech is a very substantial part of market cap in the us and a very substantial part of gdp in the us in india this contribution is on the decline because there is nothing in the public market which is considered to be deep tech in india public market the deep tech companies are software service companies and they do not get valued as deep tech hence if you cons- if the if the uh, economy and the market caps remain exactly the same and no deep tech company comes onto the listing space in the next 10 years the ratio of uh, market cap to gdp will further decline and the only way to get deep tech onto the market public markets is to have them adequately funded and growing through venture through angel investing etc so if you look at this the deep tech market cap is absolutely crucial to the macro of the economy so that's the one point which i wanted to make that's not just to vc it's not just to solutions it is also to the macro economy uh, as such it's also a message to the government 
that a lot of reforms are focused on the public markets and until those reforms are focused on private markets and deep tech the contribution to gdp will not grow if you look at a little bit more detail the we did the analysis of companies which are above 100 million dollars valuation in the public markets and above over 100 million dollar valuation in the private markets there are total 481 companies in the public markets and just 481 this is our stock exchange with thousands of companies in the stock exchange but companies over 100 million are only 481 and deep tech is 22 incidentally the the public tech companies in india are valued at 220 billion which is 7.86 percent of gdp if you look at the market cap of private companies funded in the country and by the way this private companies funded is excluding geo because i didn't add geo because it will skew the whole thing and today there are 159 companies which have a market cap of above 100 million and these are obviously private private valuations and these are the companies which potentially could could be a pipeline for the public markets and if you look at the uh, tech companies 116 uh, valuation of private tech company 116 and that contributes 4.1 percent incidentally if you add geo to it then the market cap of privately funded companies in india has already crossed the market cap of public tech companies this is amazing and this is in a much shorter time frame as such so if it's very very important that tech companies be promoted and be influenced by government and by policy by regulation to grow in the indian market space and on the global platform so effectively the tech impact on india has to grow and incidentally the impact created by funds like us is not small and to some extent i thought i'll share with you that just us as a vc and obviously this will apply to all the vcs in the country our market cap created is one percent of gdp this is i mean when i saw these figures i said hmm, that's interesting so the venture and angel community in india in deep tech and technology in new business models and new revenue models is absolutely crucial to the economy and actually absolutely crucial to the gdp growth of india and i do not believe that if this deep tech does not come into or technology at a higher level and deep tech as an integral part underneath if it does not get companies scaled up in the country then we it would be doubtful whether we'll be headed for something like a 10 trillion economy so deep tech is absolutely crucial what do we mean by deep tech and let me talk about deep tech opportunities in terms of what are the opportunities what are the supply chain and ecosystem which we see right now fundamentally we are seeing enormous opportunities and when i say enormous i don't mean a tsunami but we actually launched a deep tech identification program three years back and every time we launch we get about 300 to 400 companies coming to us and these are in robotics horizontal tech which consists of nanotech which consists of nlp etc etc and these companies uh, in aerospace and out of space health very large health very large in fact almost 35 percent of our investments are going into health tech right now medical devices india imports something close to 10 billion dollars worth of medical devices so it's time they got invented and designed here and manufactured here agri tech is a large area in fact the recent policy of enabling farm to consumer in any state in the country and no restrictions is absolutely positive for technology to scale right now in automotive and alternative vehicles it's very important because i think conventional uh, uh, travel will go down and conventional products will go down in terms of sales vehicles like cars biotechnology and energy so these are the sectors which we are seeing some amount of traction and if you look at the growth mentioned on the right hand side you know the growth in categories is increasing it's low right now but the growth in investments in these categories is increasing and we believe that globally it's very large but we believe that in india will happen larger if you look at the deep tech ecosystem in the country and this is straight out of a nascom report in 2019 
Sectors like artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, Big Data Analytics, Blockchain and ARVR have shown in the number of startups, not in the number of successful startups, but number of startups, a pretty healthy growth right now. And that's, to me, a very, very important factor. But what's very important here is to get these startups to be funded at the seed level and at the angel level, because only then larger funds can come in when the successful happens. Is there a supply chain? So we went out and studied. It's not that this is brand new in the country. If you look at the specific sectors mentioned here, there are some companies which are already there in the market, and this is not a complete list. Advanced materials, there are some companies. In metal-based, biomaterials, nanostructures, smart materials, and textile. If you look at quantum materials, there are some companies, a few of them. If in industrial robotics, actually there is much more uh, overall in the market space. If you look at the whole space tech area, and especially, uh, you know, I think execution does matter here, but independence of policy to build companies who can fly satellites, rockets from India in outer space into deep sea uh, in terms of uh, vehicles is absolutely, absolutely important. There are too many restrictions. And I think some policy note came out a, a month back. Let's see how it works. But if that happens, this is a very large area. Indian companies should be able. There is so much of knowledge here right now. Augmented reality. There is some amount of uh, supply chain here and industrial IoT. So how these companies are doing actually does not matter. There is a supply chain. They are, some of them are struggling, but some of them are doing well. And that supply chain will only increase as we move forward. Why deep tech and an impact? I think there are three very, very important reasons where deep tech is absolutely crucial to the industry. First, there are problems in the Indian market space. There are challenges. There are, these have not been solved before. These could be in the whole area of sectors like health, agriculture, education, transportation, and so on and so forth. And these could be in supply chain. This could be in distribution chain. This could be getting a product from the farmer to the consumer. Unless these ha are solved, the fundamental problem of uh, inefficiencies in the Indian economy will, remo will remain. However, my belief is that these cannot be solved by traditional means. These can only be solved by technology. And I'm saying only be solved by technology. Because traditional means, if they were solvable, they would have been solved by now. And we are seeing that increasingly as we go into the market. And I'll show you some examples as we move forward. So innovative solutions also in the deep tech area enable an Indian company to go global. Whereas a brick and mortar smokestack industry company without technology finds it very, very difficult to go global. And why I think is important to for that company to become a market leader in the country and some of them to go global because scale matters. And digital or otherwise, scale matters. It builds enormous value, market shares, uh, optimal supply chain costs, higher profitability. Those are important when a deep tech company grows. And going global and going dominant in India makes a big difference. So to me, these are, the, these are our views on why deep tech is very important because it's absolutely crucial to solving problems in the country. Let me give you some examples, and I'm choosing obviously because of shortage of time, a few examples, and permit me to take uh, examples where we are invested because that's most familiar with us. We have two companies in the agritech space. They have already reached two points. What are they solving? They're solving crop productivity and availability of inputs to farmers at a, uh, a quality, predictability, and the right price. They're solving these things. How they have reached 2.6 million farmers globally. Today, 6.7 million acres are managed by these companies. Within India, 1.8 million farmers are today benefiting from technology in the area of AI, visual reality, and uh, so finding solutions to crop productivity. Do note that the Indian average farm is a very small holding. So for them to individually do this in terms of crop productivity solutions is not possible. Okay. So 
very very massive impact by just two companies and there will be more coming in where you could cover almost 50 to 60 percent of the farming population which is dependent on just farm inputs right now in the country that's 500 million people so effectively and i'm not talking about impact here i'm talking about financial returns by deep technology solving very real problems in the agri agri tech space if you look at healthcare these are some of the companies uh, first cry today deals with mothers prenatal and postnatal health they deal with uh, babies in terms of health and uh, so does Healthplex, so does CureFit in terms of supplying fitness at home, nutrition at home, uh, doctors consulting at home, and so on and so forth. Today, they have reached collectively 20 million individuals served. And that is amazing. And many of them, if not all, have gone global. That's where deep tech, deep tech doesn't have to be, deep tech can be in e-commerce because the underlying asset is AI. So fundamentally, these two examples uh, I wanted to share with you because the impact which Deep Tech has created in companies is enormous. Now, let me quickly run through some examples of Deep Tech solving real world problems. There's a company in the technology based area of education. It's a companion robot. Patented selling now in 52 countries designed by IIT people in Bombay. It is a companion robot which initiates a conversation. Are there any competitors in the world? Not really. And again, very deep tech. Have a look at it. You'll find that this kind of product does not exist in the world. And it solves a real problem of parents not spending enough time with children for education. And in, in the COVID time, especially very important because children spend a lot of time at home. And to that extent, they need tools which do not increase the screen time. That's absolutely crucial. If you look at Healthify Me, it's the world first artificial intelligence based nutritionist, again, out of Bangalore and doing extremely well, reaching out to company uh, to countries which are uh, in Asia in Southeast Asia, in Middle East, and now in Latin America. If you look at deep fence, now with the new uh, norms of working, security is absolutely crucial. And security is a priority, especially because you have distributed workers across the world. So it's a fully containerized security solution, again, coming out of India, and extremely deep tech selling across the world. Uh, Axio, it's a proprietary clotting technology for wound care very deep tech and addressing a real challenge in the market space, which basically allows, um, you know, wounds to be addressed, wounds, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, uh, blood clotting to happen for injuries where it could lead to even death at a rapid pace. If you look at Cropin, I mentioned to you, it's an AI and data led B2B agri tech program managing in 52 countries almost 7 million acres for crop productivity. And that is through satellite based solutions. Again, a company based out of India, applying deep tech to go global. Aether Biomedical, this is one of our recent investments. And th today there are 10 million people across the world who do not have upper limbs. They do not have a, a solution which is intelligent. So this is a product advanced biosignal processing and robotics for a intelligent hand, it can lift on the softer side an egg and on the harder side can lift kilograms of weight, just like your hand does. And it is affordable in pricing. So again, deep technology as such. Very interesting. Color is out of uh, chemicals. Color is out of also vegetation. And a large part of the supply chain is concentrated in China. There are only three companies in the world who extract color out of microbes by applying stressful conditions on them. And one of them is based in India, a very deep tech company. This is used for paints. This is going to be used for textiles, harmless, uh, very uh, uh, human friendly, eco friendly, 
and does not use water. Uh, many of you may know that a gene to produce and and to be indigo colored uses thousands of liters of water, very harmful to the ecology. So here is a company who is a very deep tech and very early right now who could solve that problem. Today, nanomaterials are being used in daily lives. And here is a company who has a antibacterial product based on silver, which is going to be used as they launch their uh, antibacterial products uh, for hand sanitizers, for uh, catheters, and so on and so forth. Incidentally, India uh, consumes almost three crores worth of catheters, three crore catheters per year. And that's catheters like urinary catheters or cardiac are the biggest source of infection in hospitals today. It's solving a real problem. Summary. So our conjecture is deep tech is very important to India. If it does not grow from India, it will harm the GDP growth. It will harm the market cap growth of the country. Risk capital creates enormous value by investing in deep tech for investors because this is something which individuals can't do. And there is enough deep tech companies, very innovative in the country for providing returns, especially to rupee investors. Incidentally, rupee investors must be promoted. There is three, four trillion dollars worth of capital in India. And that capital tends to come in into the angel stage. And there is adverse tax treatment for them compared to public markets and compared to international players. So it's very important for deep tech to survive. The tax adversity in the country which has been existing for 30 years right now, must be get going away. It must be because, because angels invest in deep tech in real companies. Public markets do not create a company. Deep tech solves real endemic problems, not solvable otherwise. Innovation is on the rise. We have seen it in the last eight weeks at such a pace it is unimaginable. It facilitates companies from incubators and, and there are enough in the country who are doing this. It diversifies the supply chain. And last but not the least, deep tech companies, while solving real problems in India, enable that company to grow enormous value to go global. So that's really, um, I'll be. Uh, sure, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Sethi. I think that was a wonderful, uh, uh, sort of continuum that you had put together in terms of really explaining what deep tech would mean for us uh, post COVID and of course going forward. We have lots of questions which have come in for you. Um, uh, let me first sort of ask uh, uh, a question which has been put by Mr. Vijay who says that uh, prowess in deep tech and AI will require focused attention and mentorship from the industry, academy and the government. So how can they all be uh, working together to make sure it happens. I mean, there's less conflict in terms of adoption of deep technology. Yes, absolutely. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So it does require enormous and different scales of collaboration. There are incubators in the country, private and government. I think that's enough. It does require more capital support. It does require more industry support, which uh, I think will start happening. We've got, uh, you know, uh, uh, centers for research uh, funded by uh, uh, entrepreneurs like Chris Kupala Krishnan in IIT Chennai uh, in brain research. Uh, we've got institutions like ISC. And I think it's a matter of time before it goes down to the next level. I don't think we can depend only on the government, but government plays a very important role. And I think if we can unleash rupee capital in the country, which is tax adverse, which is facing tax adversity right now, we will have a lot more at the bottom. We, we, we need to start at the bottom where a lot more investments can go into deep tech and risk. And that sure. to me, international guys will not take it. It's rupee investors who will take. Right. Uh, so, sir, there, there is also something about uh, uh, another gentleman has asked about uh, any fund of funds or a government-based uh, um, uh, deep technology investment fund likely to come up in the future, which is similar to existing funds of funds uh, for um, early stage startups. I mean, considering that, you know, a lot of startups would now um, uh, be struck because of lack of capital and capital at least taking a little while to come in. Uh, in the angel level or the early level. So, uh, I mean, what, what could be a way forward for them? 
I think two things. One is there is SIDB as a fund of fund. Uh, there will be, uh, I think NIF is also a fund of fund. But most important is there is enough capital in the country. India, is, India for angel and for seed stage, there's no shortage of country uh, capital. So if there is a great, we just made our investment in deep tech, our most recent investing about two weeks back. So I don't think there's a shortage of capital for deep tech. I think there is a very important factor that grants are needed. That's where government comes in. There are many companies who are doing excellent work in research. They need grants and the level of grants they need is not high. It's like 50 lakhs to one crore. But what's available from grants from the government and that has to come from governments uh, and perhaps institutions which are private in nature. Uh, those grants have to be quantumly higher. They're available in a few lakhs, not in a few tens of lakhs. So I would I would I would sort of go forward and say what's needed right now is a grant mechanism which enables at the early stage such research to happen which is very innovative so that the companies can come to a level where angels can invest in and people like us can invest in those companies otherwise those companies will go outside the country we already have cases where grants are given by international grant organizations but one of the conditions is that they must move out of the country and that we must stop Sure, sir. Um, uh, somebody is also asked about how is hyperlocal delivery? Uh, I mean, you know, what what deep tech uh, could you possibly see there in the coming times? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear your question. Uh, the question is that in hyperlocal delivery, what is the opportunity for deep tech? Uh, I think it's more towards data right now, uh, and in uh, in hyperlocal delivery, you're saying, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's more towards data. Uh, I, we don't know how contactless delivery in the future will evolve, but there is IoT opportunities, there is contactless, there is the opportunity of uh, drones delivering and not people. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff which is there. Uh, for example, government has a regulation that drones can deliver, uh, uh, let's say, blood samples or, uh, you know, uh, uh, health related products in rural areas but not in urban areas and rightfully so their concern is safety rather than anything else as such but we must make that open in a city like delhi if it takes one and a half hours to have plasma going from one place to the other a drone will deliver that plasma for hyper local hyper hyper local delivery within 30 minutes or 25 minutes or 15 minutes so it's important and those by the way entrepreneurs exist in the country. They have products already in the country. We need to make sure that regulation where it is required is relaxed. And this is the best time to relax it. There is so much need right now for, you know, uh, hypothetically plasma delivery to happen in a short time from point A to point B in the urban areas of the country. Sure. Uh, so we'll take one final question in interest of time. Um, so it says there are some fundamental shifts that are required in designing deep tech solutions versus mass producing or monetizing those solutions. What can they be? What I'm fundamental sorry. shifts do you think need to be made? You know, <clears throat> deep tech solutions, I think fundamentally are part of mass. Deep tech is not something, right? I mean, if if you're measuring... Uh, if you're producing data, if you're, you know, uh, uh, if you want to make a road which does not collapse at the end of the day, whenever there's a monsoon coming and I saw some ro roads being uh, collapsing, even if there was no traffic on the road, right? Then there is a method to make those roads absolutely fundamentally correct. I think the issue is not whether what is required. The issue is deep tech has to be used in our daily lives. What happens is that deep tech is not used in our daily lives in ma making roads, in making bridges. It's the conventional, you know, smoke and stack industry who comes and builds it. So uh, how can we make sure that this happens? It's partly regulation, partly tendering systems, partly uh, availability of use cases which are there globally, which can come to India. So can we use technology and deep technology for our daily lives is what matters. And as long as that regulatory hindrances go away okay that makes a big difference if you want to build a bridge 
then if you give a contract to a small contractor who actually does not know how to use technology to build a bridge, then the bridge will be built exactly the same way. So contracts have to have technology elements inside it. Sure, sir. Um, so, um, you know, as we close this session, I think that was that was a fantastic presentation and there were lots of great ideas that you have shared with us over here today. Um, I just wanted to thank you once and also to all our participants who've been, uh, in fact, you know, we've got many more questions which we cannot take in interest of time. There are a lot of pitches also I see in the group that are coming in. Uh, but again, thank you very much. Deep Tech is certainly the way to go forward and uh, with your support and with the impact that the fund would meet and lots of governments and societies would make deep tech and the companies coming out of deep tech will probably be the um, we'll see an emergence of very different kind of uh, enterprises going forward thank you very much mr sethi and thank you to all the participants who joined us here today thank you so much and everybody stay safe look forward to meeting many of you in the future bye bye thank you sir would request all the participants to please go to the other stages we have session a and session b which has already started thank you